Hey everyone, welcome to Lakeside Online. I'm Pastor Carlin and I'm super excited that you joined us today. I have the privilege to serve as the Mineola campus pastor here at Lakeside and I'm super honored I get to bring the word to you today. And before we move on, I wanna give a quick shout out to our Mineola campus launch team and just say how much I appreciate you guys, how much I love you guys. Sarah and I, we believe that we have an amazing team and although we weren't able to launch, we know that God is gonna take this whole quarantine, this coronavirus situation and he's going to use it for our good, and we're going to launch stronger and larger than we ever could have imagined. So I want to say thank you, team, for being ready to sacrifice and being ready to serve and being ready to help us reach a new community. So we love you guys. We're grateful. We can't wait to get back together. We miss you guys. And uh, for everyone else, I just want to say thank you for being in church today. And I'm saying that we're in church on purpose because although we may not be in the same room, we're still gathered today as the church. You know, the the church is not the building. We are the church. And although the building might be empty, the Holy Spirit is still moving right where you're at in your home. And uh, just this week, I I had such an intimate moment with God. And, And I was working out in my garage and I was exercising. And in between sets, I was listening to this worship song. And I just began to worship and lift my hands up. And I just had this awesome moment with the Holy Spirit where he was just loving on me. And and I just sat in God's presence. And that was right there in my garage. So I want you to know that God is with you where you are today and that he wants to speak to all of us. I believe that God wants to speak to me. He wants to speak to all of us today. So thank you for being in church with us today. We're in part four of a series that we've been in called The Difference. And last week, uh, Pastor Jason communicated two powerful messages in this series. And on Good Friday, he talked about the difference of the blood. He was talking about the difference that Jesus' blood that he shed on the cross makes for us. And that was an amazing message. And then on Easter, Sunday, he talked about the difference of the resurrection. I love what Pastor Jason said. He said that Christ put death to death. Oh, that was so good. That was so powerful. I love that. So we heard two amazing messages in the difference last week, and I want to build on that today. And today I want to talk about grace. And, And I believe that grace is one of the things that can be one of the most misunderstood topics in the Bible among Christians and among people that don't know God. Because sometimes I feel like people think that God is ruling with an extremely heavy hand and that he's angry at us and he's mad at us and he's punishing us. And that's not the God that we serve. We serve a gracious God, a loving God. And when you get a true revelation of the grace of God, it'll change the way that you see him. You know, me understanding God's grace, it helped me take my relationship with Jesus to a whole nother level where I was no longer striving. I was no longer like trying to earn my salvation. And I think that that's what happens when you understand grace. And it's extremely important that we understand this concept. And for many of us, when we hear the word grace, there are tons of different connotations that we have, right? When when we think of a dancer or an ice skater, we would uh, describe them as being gracious or graceful. And uh, if we are thinking of the bank, you know, the banks, they have grace periods. Or for you, grace, it might be what you do before you eat. You know, you say your grace, you thank God for your food. Or, uh, But I want to talk about today the biblical grace of God. I want to talk about God's grace. And uh, I have a definition and let's take a look at it. My definition of grace is this. Grace is the unmerited, undeserved, unearned, unconditional love, favor, and forgiveness of God. If you're taking notes, I want you to write that down. Notice it's unmerited, undeserved, unearned. It's unconditional love, favor, and forgiveness of God. In simple words, grace is getting what you don't deserve. Grace is deserving punishment and getting blessing. Grace is getting the promotion even though you know that you're not that good, even though you know that you don't deserve it. That's what grace is. And grace empowers us to do what we do. You, you want to know how my wife hasn't killed me during this quarantine thing, and I've been driving her crazy these past few weeks. You want to know how she hasn't killed me? Only by the grace of God. I'm telling you, grace empowers us to do what we do. Now, I want to I wanna take a look at Scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. I love this. I love this text. I love this scripture so much. The Bible says, I mean that you have been saved by what? By grace through believing. You did not save yourselves. It was a gift from God. It was not the result of your own efforts. So you cannot brag about it. God has made us what we are. In Christ Jesus, God made us to do good works, which God planned in advance for us to live our lives doing. 
Man, I, I, I love that scripture. And we're going to go deeper here uh, in a little bit. But I, I want to preach a message today entitled, The Difference Grace Makes. How many, how many of you know that grace made an, a, an extreme difference in your life? That grace made an impact in your life? And today I want to talk about the difference grace makes. So if you would, just pray with me. God, we're, we're so grateful to come together online, God. Gathered as the body of Christ. Gathered as a church. And God, I pray that you would use me as a vessel to communicate your word. God, I can't do this without you. I can't do this without your spirit flowing through me and speaking through me. I can't do this without your anointing, God. So use me. God, I pray that hearts will be open and that we will receive your word. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. So with this entire coronavirus thing, uh, we've all been spending more time in our homes than we ever have been. And for me, it also means that I've probably been spending more time on my phone and on social media than I ever have before. And uh, I've been scrolling. And one of the things that I saw the other day, it was somebody saying, um, basically they were saying that they believe in the law. Like they, they believe in the covenant of the law. They, they follow the New Testament. Like they, they're following the law. And um, I saw that and it, it was just a little, it was, it was a little alarming to me because I don't believe that's what God intends for us. The Bible talks about how Jesus came and he replaced the old covenant with the new covenant. And that old covenant was the covenant of the law and he replaced it with the new covenant of grace. And when I say that, I'm not saying that the law is useless. There, there is use for the law. In Romans 7, 7, Paul talked about how the law revealed to him his sin. So, so that's what the law does for us. It reveals to us our sin. It, it reveals to us our mistakes. It reveals to us when we rebel against God. So I'm not saying that the law is useless. All I'm saying is that the covenant that God intended us for be under, to be under is the covenant of grace. And I've just been scrolling on social media. And if you're like me, you have to give yourself limits. I, I, I have to give myself limits. Like I have to tell myself, all right, after the next 15 minutes, you can't still stay on social media. Like you got to get off and do something else. Or like I'm a snacker. Like we have a ton of snacks in the house and I have to try and limit my snacking. Like I have to tell myself, you can't eat more than one donut after dinner. Like I have, to, I, have to, I, have to ration, I have to ration myself and I really have to basically give myself these laws. I have to give myself these guidelines, these rules. And, and I, I do that and, and because I think it's what's best for me. And, and I'm giving myself all of these laws and I can't even follow them. Because, you, you know, I, I spent the 15 minutes on my phone turned to 45 minutes. And uh, the one donut that I told myself what I was going to eat ended up being three. And the episode of Netflix that I told myself I was going to stop watching after I watched three or four more episodes. So I, I, I'm giving myself these rules. I'm giving myself these guidelines. And I can't even follow them myself. And for many of you, I'm sure that you've set some goals and some guidelines and, 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 and some things that you want to do during this quarantine. For you, you might want to exercise at home, say, three times or two times a week or you want to cook healthier meals or uh, you, 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 if you didn't make uh, any goals or anything during this quarantine, you definitely made some in January because everybody makes New Year's resolutions and, and we set these rules and these guidelines and you said that you was going to stop eating out as much and that you was going to get fit and, and, and the truth is after a few weeks you follow through and then after that like you're done. You're, you're not following through. You're, you're eating unhealthy. You're eating out more often than you did even before. Like you're not working out three times from home. You're definitely not doing that. And you're watching, binge watching all these kinds of shows on Netflix. We make these rules for ourselves and nobody's making us make these rules. These are rules that we make for, for ourselves. It's not, nobody's forcing us to do that. And we make these laws and we don't even follow them perfectly. If we can't follow our own laws and rules, on our own, how do you think we can follow God's rules and laws perfectly? Like if, we, if we can't follow our own laws perfectly, how do you think we can follow God's laws perfectly? And what that tells me, our inability to follow laws and to follow rules, that tells me that we all need grace. It doesn't matter who you are. We, we, we all need grace. You know, it doesn't matter if you've been saved for a week or you've been saved for 50 years. We all need grace. We all need the same grace. I don't care who you are. We all need grace. And I want to take a look at the scripture in James chapter two. The Bible says, oh, I love this. I love this so much. The Bible says for the person who keeps all of the laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken all the laws. The person who keeps all the laws except one is as guilty as the person who's broken all laws. So what that tells me is that I'm guilty 
and you're guilty and, and, and we're all guilty. But you see what we like to do is we like to categorize our sin, right? We like to put levels on it. Like, like we, we like to think that we're better than somebody else because they sin differently than we do. Like, like he cheated on his wife and I just told a little lie. God says you're just as guilty. Like, like he's an alcoholic. Like I got drunk. So what? Like God says you're, you're just as guilty. Like, like he killed somebody. Like I just stole a little bit of money from my family. God says you're just as guilty. And what we try to do is we try to put levels on this thing and make it seem like we're better than somebody else because we sin differently. But the only difference between their sin and your sin is that their sin is out in the open and everybody else sees it and your sin is behind closed doors so nobody else sees it. And you're judging them, although you fall short as well. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I feel like I'm preaching right about now. Here's what we do. We stack sins this way. This is how we stack sins. God stacks sins this way. We, we try to put levels on it. But God says that even if you break one, one law, one rule, you're just as guilty. And here's what I found is that people who deserve grace the least need it the most. People who deserve grace need it the most. And luckily we serve a loving, gracious God who extends it to us. And there are some principles about grace that we learn in Ephesians chapter two that we really, I wanna dive into and I wanna go deeper with you today. I hope it's okay if we go deeper. So the first thing that I want you to understand that we learn from Ephesians chapter two is that we have been saved by grace through faith. We've been saved by grace through faith. So, so there's one way to salvation. It's by placing your faith in Jesus. It's faith and faith alone. See, what religion says is that you have to check off these boxes. Like you have to fix this and you have to fix that and you have to stop doing this and you have to stop doing that and then you can come to God. But the Bible doesn't say that. It, it says just faith. Faith and faith alone is the avenue to receiving the grace that comes from God. Like you don't have to place your faith in Jesus and then all of a sudden start leading a Bible study. Like you don't have to place your faith in Jesus and fix everything all at once. No, that's religion. Jesus, he says, I, I want the relationship. I, I wanna be in relationship with you. And that's what man says. But, but God is not about religion. God is all about relationship. So you gotta understand that it is, we're saved by grace through faith. The next thing you gotta understand is that you did not save yourself. You had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with it. You can't earn it. You had nothing to do with it. You aren't saved because you're good. You're saved because God is good. Yes, you're saved because Jesus is good and he is loving and he is gracious. And what you have to understand is that God's grace is not conditional upon our ability to perform. You know, some of us are living like our salvation is a gamble. Like we're unsure, like we're living this life, like we don't know if we're, if we're gonna end up in heaven. Like we're living like it's a gamble. And we don't, we don't have to live that way. God, God didn't intend for us to live that way. We don't have to live uh, like it's a gamble because when Jesus died on the cross, he died for our sins and he paid the price for us. You know, we're living like our salvation is on layaway. Like, like we have to pay our, our salvation. We have to pay this debt with our good deeds constantly. We're, we're living like our salvation is on layaway. But when Jesus went to the cross and he took the wrath of God and he took the sin of the world, check this, he paid for our sin in full. He paid for in full all of our past sins, all of our present sins, and all of our future sins. Right. Jesus paid Amen. for. You did not save yourself. Here's the next thing that I want you to understand is that grace is a gift. It's a gift. Pastor Benjamin, when's your birthday? November 12th. November 12th is Pastor Benjamin's birthday. You can send him presents on that day. Now I'm just messing with you guys. But Pastor Benjamin, let, 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 me, let, me, let me make this illustration. I'm going to use you um, as my illustration. So it's your birthday party, and I come, and I show up. I wish you happy birthday. I hand you this gift, right? You open the gift, and it's the brand new pair of shoes that you had been wanting, and you open it. You're like, I love it. This is exactly what I wanted. Thank you so much. And then after you, you tell me thank you, I say, all right, that'll be $155 and some change. I don't think so. And, then, and, and, and here's what he would do. He'd be like, 
take this back. Like, I don't even like this that much. Like, I don't even want this gift. Like, he, he, he would give it back. But you have to understand this. It's not a gift if he has to pay for it. It's not a gift if he has to do anything to earn it. That's how grace works. It's a gift. You can't do anything to pay for it. You can't do anything to earn it. The only thing that you can do with a gift is receive it. That's the only thing you could do with a gift is receive it. And you got to understand this. Grace is a gift that costs a great deal for the giver and nothing for the recipient. Grace isn't cheap. You got to check the price tag on that. Grace cost God his son. Grace cost God Jesus. It wasn't cheap, but God gives it to us freely when we place our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And many of you, you're probably like confused, like this doesn't make sense. Why would God do something like this? And I I can answer that question with one word, love. Love, love made God do this. Love made Jesus go to the cross and die for our sins. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. You can tell the value of something based on what someone else is willing to give up for it. Like th- these are like my favorite pair of shoes. These are probably one of my favorite pair of shoes. I actually didn't buy them. They were a gift. But you can see the value of these shoes that I'm wearing based on what someone was willing to pay for them. Based on how much money someone was willing to give up for these shoes. You can see the value in them. You can see the value in your life. You can see the value that God places on you based on what he's willing to give up for you. He's willing to give up Jesus. He's willing to give up his son and you can see that, that, that your life has value, that God, God thinks highly of you, that God loves you, and God, God wants to be in a relationship with you. And he did all of that on a maybe. He did all of that not even knowing if you would accept him, not even knowing if you would decide to enter into a relationship with him. He gave up Jesus on a maybe. That's how much God values you. That's how much God thinks of you. So you gotta understand that grace is a gift. It's a gift. Next thing you got to understand is that it was not a result of your own efforts. It was not a result of your own efforts, so we cannot brag about it. You can't brag about the grace of God. It it wasn't anything that we did. But you know what us humans, we like to do? We like to take credit for things. I don't know what it is about us. Like We we like to, to act like we're the reason things happen. Like We like to say, like, look what I did. Like, like, look at this company that I built. Like, look at this degree that I earned. Like, look at me. Look at, look at what I did. Like, I, I got it out the mud. Like, I did it from the ground floor. I got a quick question for you today. How do you think it is that you woke up this morning? Yeah, that's a good question. How, how do you think that when you were sleeping last night, that all of your organs were working together to keep your heart beating and pumping and, and, and that you woke up this morning? How do you think that happened? I got the answer, it's by the grace of God. It's only by the grace of God. And here's the thing, when you understand God's grace, when you understand that, you don't take credit for things. And that's one of the things that I love about our pastor. I I love Pastor Jason because when things are going right in the church and God's blessing our church, it's never, hey, look at me. It's always, hey, let's give God praise. Because this, this is what God is doing. Like this isn't, this isn't Pastor Jason's church. Like this is God's church. The Lakeside Church is God's church. And, and I love that about our leadership. And you see that across the board and all of our leaders that this isn't about us. This is all about God. And we can't take credit for any of this. And even me, I, when, I, when I speak, people come to me and they say, you're, you're a really good communicator to be so young. And I really do appreciate the encouragement. And I, I love our church. I miss you guys. I miss you guys so much. And I do appreciate that encouragement. And, and I, I really do value that. But if I'm being honest, I'm not doing it for man's approval. I, I, I'm doing it for God's approval. And, and, and the truth is, is that when people tell me that, I always say praise God. And the reason being is because this isn't me. Amen. Yeah. Like you, if you think this is me up here communicating and delivering this message, like you, you got things twisted, like you got things mixed up. Because the only reason I'm up here and able to do this is because of the grace of God. Amen. 
because of the Holy Spirit working through me and, and flowing through me. Like this, this isn't me. I can't take credit for this. I can't take credit for this. And I guarantee you in heaven, when people, get, when people are in heaven, I guarantee you nobody's taking credit for being there either. Because they know how amazing it is and how awesome it is. And, and we know how jacked up we are. And they know how amazing it is. And they know, okay, I couldn't have had anything to do with this. Yeah. It's only by the grace of God. Amen. When you understand God's grace, you don't take credit for things. Amen. You give God all the glory. You give God all the, all the honor and all the praise. And that's what I try to do with my life as well. And whenever you preach a message like this, naturally people go in the direction of, well, I guess that means that I can just sin, do what I want, and God's grace is going to cover it. Because you said, PC, you said we serve a gracious God, like we can do whatever we want. And if that's your mindset, I, I would tell you that, that that's a, a toxic mindset to have. And the truth is, is that grace is not a license to sin. Grace does not, does not mean you have the green light to do whatever you want, but because you believe and you place your faith in Jesus that, that it's okay, that grace is going to cover it. Gr grace is not a license to sin. And you got to understand this about Jesus' crucifixion, that Jesus' crucifixion fulfilled God's plan. See, God's plan was to punish the sin and preserve the sinner. Like th this, is, this, is, this is God's heart. He hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. And if you're willing to take advantage of, the God's, of God's grace, I'll tell you that's a toxic mindset to have. And I would call you a vampire Christian. And most of you are like, what are you talking about? What is he talking about, a vampire Christian? What I mean by a vampire Christian, I mean that you want to reap all the benefits of Jesus' blood, but you don't want to replicate his actions. That you want to you benefit from the cross and Jesus' sacrifice, but when God calls you into the light, you don't want to step into the light. You want to stay in the dark. you a vampire you vampire Christians, yeah, I'm, ch I'm, I'm chuckling, chuckling. That's funny. But can I be honest? I, I found that most of us don't step into the light and stay in the darkness because we have a hard time getting past our past. Because we have a hard time getting over our future. And we want to we wanna follow God and we want to take this relationship to another level, but we just haven't seen the transformation in our own life yet. So we're a little reluctant and, and, and we're hesitant because we haven't seen that transformation. And you know what our society does? Our society celebrates transformation. Like we celebrate people doing things different. Like we celebrate people making a difference. Like we support companies that we know are making a difference. Like this is what we do. We celebrate tr transformation. We celebrate difference makers. And I'll throw it out there that the biggest difference maker is Jesus. And we celebrate people that make a difference. Like we celebrate people that are getting healthier and losing weight. Like we encourage and we love on those people that were, that were, uh, that, that were able to um, transform their body and transform uh, their health. We celebrate people who get different jobs in different positions. Like we celebrate uh, um, those people and we celebrate girls. You guys celebrate when one another cuts their hair short. Yeah, I see you guys in the Facebook comments. When one of you cuts your hair short, you say, girl, I love that you did something different. <laughs> different. We celebrate when people make a difference. And what you have to understand today is that if you've placed your faith in Jesus, then you're different. That there, there's, there's been a transformation on the inside of you that you have to understand that you're not the same. And I can prove this to you. I can prove this to you in Scripture. The Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> the Bible says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. You see that? It says anyone. Now, I looked up anyone in the Greek. And you know what it means? It means anyone. And anyone includes the drug addict. Anyone includes the adulterer. Anyone includes the alcoholic. Anyone includes the person that said they didn't believe in God, they hated God, that they were mad at God, that they would never follow God. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What I found is that people get hung up right there because... They get saved and they still struggle with some of the same passions, 
some of the same addictions, some of the same things that they were dealing with before. And they thought that everything was going to get easier. And I, I, if I'm being honest with you, it does get easier in time, but the temptation never stops. The enemy is always trying to get us to slip and fall. And you get frustrated because you want to see immediate results. Like we have a very impatient generation. Like, like we've created systems for everything to where nobody has to wait in line. Like we don't, we don't like to wait for anything. But the God that we serve is a God of process. And things don't just happen overnight. And we have to be ready to, to, to fight through the process. I, I want to read that same scripture in the Amplified Version. Because I feel like it provides a lot more clarity. And it breaks it down a lot better. So 2 Corinthians 5 in the Amplified, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is joined to him by faith in him as Savior. So if you're in Christ, that means that you've placed your faith in Jesus as Savior. It says he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. So, so your, the old spirit that was on the inside of you, it was, it was dead. And now because you've placed your faith in Jesus Christ, God has raised a new life, a new spirit to life. That's what that's talking about. And then in verse 18, it says, but all these things are from God who has reconciled himself to us through Christ, making us acceptable to him. So what you have to understand is that I, I, I get it. I've been frustrated before too. But what you have to understand is that it wasn't a physical rebirthing. Like you, weren't, you weren't physically reborn again. It, it was a spiritual rebirthing. God, God says, the spirit that was in you that was dead, I've now resurrected and raised back to life. And I filled you with my Holy Spirit. And now you have every single thing that you need. And you know, all those mistakes that you made, all those, all those things that you promised me you would stop doing, and all the things that you said you would never do again, and you still did it anyway. God says, I, I've forgiven you for that. He said, there's grace for that. He said, all the mistakes that you will make, God says, I've forgiven you for that too. There's grace for that. And we have to understand that because of grace, we're different. We truly are different. And although we physically might not be different, spiritually on the inside of us, we've, we've received God's Holy Spirit. We are different. And what, what, I, what, I've been, what I want to tell you today is that by the grace of God, we have received transformation through Christ. We, we, have, we have received transformation. I know you've made mistakes. I, 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 know, I know you've fallen short. I, I know that. But by the grace of God, we have transformation. And I know how many of us are willing to admit that before Christ, you know, there were some things in us that could use some fixing. And now because we have Christ, we have every single thing that we need. And that's, I, I want to highlight, I want to highlight that before, because we're going to, we're going to read off some statements together. I want you to read it with me and we're, we're going to highlight the before, because, because I want you to see the difference. I want you to see the difference that grace makes, the difference that Jesus makes. And all of this is only possible. It's all only possible by the fact that Jesus died for us paid our price, paid our sin. It's only possible by the grace of God. So the first one, I want you to read it with me. Wherever you're at at home, I want everybody to read this out loud. We're going to declare this. We're going to speak this over our own life. So before Christ, I was a sinner. Because of Christ, I'm a son. I'm a daughter. Before Christ, I was dead in my sin. Because of Christ, I have been raised to life. Before Christ, I was guilty. Because of Christ, I have been redeemed. Before Christ, I was stuck in sin. Because of Christ, I have become the righteousness of God. Before Christ, I was broken. Because of Christ, I've been healed. Before Christ, I was walking in darkness. Because of Christ, I've been called into his marvelous light. Before Christ, I was weak. Because of Christ, I have strength in God. Before Christ, I was stuck in fear. Because of Christ, I choose to be in faith. Before Christ, I was anxious. Because of Christ, I have peace from God that surpasses all understanding. Before Christ, I was forsaken. Because of Christ, I have a confident hope. Before Christ, I was headed to eternal destruction. Because of Christ, I will spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. 
wherever you're at right now, I just want you to thank Jesus for that. That's the difference grace makes. So grateful, Jesus. None of this is possible without you. That, that, that's the difference that, that grace makes. And Jesus, we're so grateful to meet together as the body of Christ, as one church, one family. God, I thank you so much for my church family. God, I pray that you would be speaking to hearts right now. I know that you've been speaking to hearts. I know that you've been moving. I know that your Holy Spirit is present with whoever's watching this right now, God. And we just want to take a moment to thank you for your grace. Thank you that Jesus paid our price. Thank you that he took our sin and shame so that we can be in fellowship with you, so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And God, today, we honor you. We honor the fact that you would die for us. That you would be ridiculed. And God, we're just so grateful. And we acknowledge today the fact that everything that we have is only by your grace. We're only able to continue by your grace, God. I just pray that you would give a fresh revelation to every single person that's watching today. That they would have a new understanding of your grace. That they would have a, a new love for you because they understand your grace. God, we worship you in this place today. We magnify your name. We honor you. We love you in Jesus' name. Hey, I want you to worship with us and just sing these words out genuinely and mean it. Just let God know how much we love him, how much we need him. We worship you today. Jesus, Jesus, oh. I remember when I got my first credit card. When I got my credit card, the banker, he told me, this is your limit. You cannot spend any more than this amount. You cannot charge more than this limit onto this card. And the good news today is that there is no limit on the grace of God. That, that God continuously gives and extends to us his grace. And I know you're probably thinking, I've messed up too much and I've made too many mistakes. But there's grace for you. And there's another definition of grace that I want to look at from the Baker's Encyclopedia. 
Here's another definition of grace. It says God's inexhaustible capacity to forgive. God's inexhaustible capacity to forgive. Do you have any idea what inexhaustible means? It means it never runs out. It it never runs dry. It, it, It never goes short. God has an inexhaustible capacity to forgive us because of grace and because of Jesus. And what you have to understand today is that God's grace is bigger than your sin. God's grace is bigger than your sin. You haven't messed up too much. There's grace for you. No matter what you've done, we serve a a gracious God, a forgiving God. And here's what you have to understand today is that your greatest accomplishments will never be enough to gain your entrance into heaven. But your greatest mistakes will never be enough to keep you out. Jesus and Jesus alone is the only way. It's the only way to receive eternal life and spend eternity in heaven with Jesus, with God. Hey, thanks for watching. If this video was a blessing to you, take two seconds and click that like button. Share your comments with us. If the Word of God is making an impact in your life, we want to hear about it. So email us at praisegod at the lakeside.church. We're always encouraged to hear how the Word of God is making an impact in your life. One last thing, subscribe to our channel. That way you never have to miss a thing. It takes literally seconds, so subscribe before you go. We love you guys. Thanks for watching.